Okay, so now we're going to start uh, taking um, after videos with Garrett. With Garrett, we started on Monday and Tuesday and follow the camp. Yesterday, we didn't have uh, much bowling at all. Uh, we've been doing some uh, learning and class work, and now we're ready to continue the ball. He's also trying a new ball. Okay, so thank you for giving me a good video to look at, because that was a good shot. Um, come over with us. Say that again? Okay, use a 4,000? Okay. Now, one of the things that we, we started working at the very last moment on Wednesday was to, was to give a little bit more of a sense of you following through towards your target instead of spending a lot of time and energy on the approach to try to get to some kind of position. And then when we got to the far line, we just let the ball go and and hoping for the ball to get into the right direction. And the hope is not as a, I'm hoping to do this, but the hope means hoping that the body was already in the correct position to allow the, the ball direction to be correct. Uh, so what we, what we did was to say, okay, now this is your, my, my focal point and I'm gonna take my hand and my arm and actually swing it towards where I want it to go instead of just giving way or, or um, uh, giving up at the bottom of the swing and just expecting the ball to go in the direction that is correct uh, because the ball what we do is to take the direction of what the body is doing so at least if if our body is not pointing in the right direction if we actually try to follow through towards where we're trying to go a couple of things are going to happen first of all you're not going to slow down the release because the arm is not slowing down and the other one is because you're trying to go someplace you're accelerating that arm and not only gives you direction but also gives you a little bit more speed and it gives you more presence in the ball you know the ball is more in control you are more in control of the ball than the the ball being in control by itself when we slow down the speed now friction takes control and you're too depending on what the lane does if you get a lane that because you're going to miss to the right a lot because we still have issues with the hips and they're pointing to the right too much but if the speed is slow, then it's, it's going to depend a lot of what the lane actually does for you. So if you bowl on lanes that have a lot of dry on the right, then you may not see the fact that you actually get your body moving in a wrong direction. When you have conditions like we have over here that regardless if it's short, medium or long, you have something that's spread out across the lane and you don't have a lot of wet and dry here you just got a crown where you have you may have a little bit more oil in the middle and the outsides but it's still going to be a sport kind of condition so here you're not going to have the luxury of missing to the right and having a you know an adult bumper which is what we call it when you have a house condition and you have a lot of dry on the right uh, you cannot send it to the gutter then the more that you swing it to the side the more that the ball hooks sometimes we go brooklyn when we miss to the right that's because we got like an adult bumper kind of system Okay, at, at Kegel we don't use that. So now you can see when you miss, you miss. Here is, there's not such a thing as guiding the ball to the pocket. So let's see what, what you're doing here, okay? Now we have been working on a couple of things. Now that motion that you have there is, the, is, is, the, is one of the things that we've tried to change from the very beginning. And we haven't, together as a team, we haven't been able to solve that issue yet. So you are as guilty as I am, uh, but because I'm older, I'm going to say that is your fault. Okay? Uh, but uh, you know, uh, all jokes aside, uh, there is a, as a team, we have to solve this. But you're throwing the ball, so there is a point that we have to say, okay, I understand what it is that I need to do. And my body, for some reason, is fighting against doing something here. So sometimes we have to say, enough is enough. I'm going to make this happen. It's not going to happen on its own. I can't hope for it to happen and expect it to happen. I'm going to expect it not to happen, so I'm going to force it. I'm going to force an issue, okay? Because we haven't been able to do that. And this is the point. We're still getting, I'm going to, I'm going to make the upper left screen uh, the biggest I can so we can look at it a bit more in detail 
Okay. Now, let's go back to the first day on Monday. Now, your feet are better than they were. Okay. The ball is still too much in the middle of the body. Is actually is actually almost in front of your chest, not quite, but almost in front of the chest. Okay. It's certainly in front of your nose. It's a good thing it's not my nose because mine is big. Okay, I'd be bumping against the ball, but for you, it's almost there. Okay. So what happens is. First step is fine. Now, you're go eventually you have to get the ball outside the body because you're not going to swing it right straight into your legs. So a ball is going to find a way to get outside the body because it can go that way enough and you can't just swing it that way. You're going to try to go left, but you're going to have to go left a lot to try and clear a lot of the ball. If the ball was out here, like an exaggeration, and when I say here, I'm saying like w way outside the body. There is no need for me to go that way, so I would just go straight and the ball is going to be by my side. But the more I put the weight on the left, not the weight, but the ball on the left, the more I'm going to have to go left and the more I'm going to have to turn my body just to clear the ball. Okay, right now you have to clear all the way from here to there. Now the ball itself is eight and a half inches. So you have to clear about that much to get the ball by your side. Okay, and yet it's going to come in a circle. It's either going to go that way to the right or that way and wrap around your body and go to the left. But it's not going to be able to go to here and then straight. It, it can do that. So it's going to follow a train going that way or a train coming this way. Okay. So, so now we way over crossed. The foot has to point to the right, obviously. Okay. And the ball goes tipped out into the weakest part of the body uh, or your hand because certainly the, the closer I am to the center, the stronger I am. And the more I go to there, the weaker it is, and then it's very difficult to handle it there or here. Okay, that's why people that do that a lot they end up with injuries here in the wrist. So I don't really think I need to go any farther because of this. I can I can come up with a number with a list of things that are wrong. Okay. But they're all caused by the same thing. So it's irrelevant that I say, yeah, and my hand does this at the top, and then I come from the top this way because the ball is over here, over, you know, on the left shoulder. So I can make a list of the things that are wrong, but I, I'm actually over-repeating myself because if we stop the need for the body to do these things, then those things won't happen. Right now we're doing these things, and then I go, okay, now the release is doing this, and your fourth step is doing this, and I, I, we got to stop this. Well, you know, Ruben, you're not very smart, because um, if I ask you to, to solve something at the foul line, you can't do it. You can't solve three, four issues at the foul line just by, by applying my force and my body and my brain to do it. What I have to do is to stop the need for the system to do that. So I have to fix the beginning. So everything else that we have wrong, we can solve it if we solve that. If we don't solve this, none of that is going to get solved. Now we also saw from the side view here, okay, from those lines are not yours, so let's clear them up, okay. Now when we look at your So that's where you stop the slide, okay? So I can say, well, that timing is very late. It's way too far back the ball by the time, you know, you get like one, two, three, four. So you're on L5, okay? That's way too late. You know, do you know what that means, L5? Okay, L means left and R means right. So how many bowling balls... How many bowling balls are you behind that that straight line, which is right here? From there, okay. How many bowling balls can I fit from there? To, 
you know, I gotta go from there to there. Is how many balls can I fit? They're not all the same size because I'm not that precise. Okay. Okay, so how many balls can I fit from there to there? And so probably you are one, one, two, three, four. So you are you are L4, left four, or R is going to be on this side, which is the early side. Okay. So in essence, you're very late. Okay? We we really like I personally like somewhere, and I'm going to clear all that up, and I'm going to look at something that looks between that knee and that heel. Anything within that range is good. If you're over here, you are too early. When you are too early, you don't have enough time to create the release. When you are too late, you don't have enough time to square up. So most people that are early in their timing, which means by the time they finish the slide, the ball is in front of them already, that the hand tries to emulate that same motion. And then the earlier you are, the hand most that mostly gets on top of the ball. And when you are early, the miss usually is left. That's why people that have early timing, they overspin the ball and they usually go Brooklyn quite a bit. Now, where are your most of your misses, right, right or left? Right. Sometimes we can even get the ball to the gutter. Even if we're bowling fourth arrow, at times we can throw it all the way to the gutter. It's just because you're so late that the shoulders don't have enough time to square up. So if you release it at the point that you feel is okay, you may actually get the ball way right. So the next one, what happens? We just go, don't send the right, which I'm going to wait a little bit longer, and now I'm going to go left. So I look like a windshield wiper. You know, it's going that way and that way and that way, okay? That's because of the same thing. So you're early in your timing here, you get up there, this doesn't work, which means it's dead. Okay, that right left shoulder doesn't move, so I start to slide, slide, slide. I can still see the shoulder in front, which means shoulder ain't moving. Okay, still not moving. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm going to include, you already have it this, you don't have it this from Monday and Tuesday. I'm going to include this into, into those. And... The first lesson that we gave you oral is pretty much the same thing as we did now, which is this. This stays there way too long. Three things need to happen at the same time from top of the swing. Number one, ball starts to come down. Number two, the foot, the, the sliding foot moves from the four step position towards the front. So it starts to move from back there. Ball starts to come down, and the le and the non-bowling arm, the NBA, and the shoulder starts to square up. So from the top of the swing, from that position, this, this, and this, they all happen at the same time. Okay. However, the brain doesn't have the ability to do three things at the same time or think about them. The body can react to things, and then reactions, you can have a lot of reactions from one trigger. You cannot have two triggers. Okay. This is what happens. You know, you're walking, so you take one, two, three, four. You don't have to think about sliding, because once you take one, two, three, four, what are you going to do next? Five. I mean, you're going, you got momentum going forward, you're just going to go. So even if you don't think about taking a step, you're going to take the step. If you allow the arm to be swing, okay, and swing into whatever top is, and you are not muscling it, Gravity is going to take the ball down. So even if you don't think about swinging it or bringing it down, the ball is going to come down unless you force it to be there. Otherwise, it's going to do it on its own. However, this, if I go that way and I leave this dead, it's not going to go that way until I tell it to go. Okay? So your trigger needs to be that shoulder. Bef and then it has to be from the top of the swing. However, if I think, do this at the top of the swing, by the time I actually do it, it just passed a couple of tens of seconds, and now I'm halfway through my, through my uh, release and my slide, and then I'm going to do this too late. And I'm going to square up too late, and the shoulders are going to be moving in a circle throughout your, your slide. So your trigger needs to be this. You're going to not think about taking a step. You're not going to think about the arm. All you're going to do is you get to four. And before the ball gets to the top, and this is a key, you have to tell it square up here. 
So the ball is getting to the top, square up. Not, don't think about the arm, don't think about the foot. But if you leave this dead here too long, you're already creating the, right, the wrong host for the body to respond correctly to what you're doing, okay? So we're gonna do three things at the moment. And we cannot move any farther into your development until we solve these three issues. One, and I'm gonna recap, not recap, but I'm gonna rewind a little bit. Um, we're gonna do three things. And you can do them all at the same time because we're gonna do something that's in the stance so once you get this ready, you don't have to think about it, okay? And the next one is going to be at the beginning of your motion, which is on that first and second step, okay? Which is going to stop that one. We're going to try to go right in your head, okay? With a step that is straight that way, and we're going to unfold the ball. So in the stance, we're going to take the ball to the side a lot more. We're going to keep it there, and then on that second step, the step is going to have to be straight, which for you, you have to think that it's going right. You're going to feel like you're going that way. But in fact, you're probably going to go right in front of your foot, which is ultimately what I want. I don't want you to take the step straight. I want it to be in front of the left foot, but I don't want to overcross. So you have to think right before it actually goes to the right place. So we're going to get the ball on the outside. We're going to take that second step in your head straight or towards the right. Okay, and then when you get to the four step, to the top of the swing, the only thing you're going to f focus on is getting that shoulder squared up right from the top of the swing. Okay, those are the three things we're going to do. If we're able to do that, believe me, your ball speed is going to come up. You're not going to be sending over there. Your timing is going to be earlier or not so late and now we can start going into something else so the next time we see you uh, we can start working on you know some other things uh, your release is good you got rev rate and not as much as you will end up having just because these timing issues don't allow you to do so okay but when we do get rid of these initial hiccups then we're going to be able to maximize your game or move forward to where you actually could reach. Okay? Deal? There you go. Okay, let's watch you.